Hi everybody, welcome back to Greg's Workshop. Um, just a little update to let you know what was going on. I had another breakdown um, on my air compressor. She slipped the Allen key, the keyway out of the um, out the motor sprocket. The little grub screw come loose and she spat the keyway. It wasn't very pretty, but <laughs> it just spat the belt off. Um, yeah, so I had a bloke coming in today, supposed to be helping me do some work, but by the looks of it, he's not showing. I'm going to switch it over and show you what we're doing. Right, I'm up to doing a bit of polishing, this up to doing bits of this stuff to sand it down. It's coming up really good. It's taken a fair bit. I've got nearly the top done. I've got a few bits and pieces in here and one there and a couple down here. Then underneath it, down the bottom. Done. I still haven't got my bearings for the... Um, and I'm going to shove you in a holder because this is... I don't like holding my phone, too, my camera too much. I've got clumsy fingers. Right. Now, it looks pretty good. Gonna be pretty good. I went out yesterday and bought myself another roll, a couple, couple of rolls of big wire and... Um, yeah. We were gonna do... <coughs> the spark plugs, the leads, and you said injectors in my four-wheel drive because I'd rather need my truck. I've got that much to do. I still haven't got my mill because I can't shift nothing to get out of the road to go buy it yet. Um, otherwise, everything's going not too bad. This takes a long time to sand. I'm using the air buzzer. I said, now it um, when it's through the cog, it's just a grub screw. What was off center on the, the grub screw was just a little bit off center in the flywheel. And um, so I'll grab a seat and sit here and put this on down so I can see his. And you guys can see me. I'll turn you around. Here we go. That's better. Now, no, this has turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. I took it from more levels. And that little bit of a gap there, I'm going to suffer with that. The, ball, the, the, the wheels all sit perfect. I haven't got any, they'll sit perfect when I get it done. So all I have to do then is, well, see, I ain't got a car, I've got to wait now. The missus has gone to her mum's to help her do some work over there. Um, yesterday I had, we had our grandson back from where he was. He was sick with COVID. He got put into quarantine. Poor little bugger. And they put him in a house on his with some other people. Well, he's a welfare child. And uh, they kind of think we, we don't know how to raise children. We got six, I got 13 kids of my own. My girl has only got three. But she knows all about it. She's 63, 65, 66. But... They seem, we've had people walk into our house, mate, and tell us that, um, oh, we could do a better job on our own. We're only 12, only, they're only 20, 30 years old, but no kids. Never had any children. And tell you how, what to do. And telling me what to do on my own home, mate, is a big mistake. Well, it's actually my girlfriend's house, but no one tells me what to do. Even the girl don't tell me what to do. 
He knows I won't take no notice. He asked me to do something, I'll do it. Don't tell me. Never tell me to do something. You get told where to get off. <laughs> yeah, I know, I shouldn't have that attitude, but... I got an attitude where I was going to pay him 150 bucks for a couple of hours' work. He helped me do the... Now I've got to get out there in the boiling heat and do it on my own. And I'm not happy. <laughs> yes, I wanted to move a lot of stuff around this week. And by the looks of it, I'm not going to get nothing done like normal. I'm having a bit of a whinge today. I'm not in a happy mood. I said I've been... Um, prices on things. That's what's pissing me off. I saved up for over a year, nearly two years, over a year, a little bit of money away every now and again to put, um, to buy me mill, milling machine. The one I want's about 2,400 bucks, weighs about 390 kilos the head, bit and the base weighs probably about a little bit more. And it's just a bare machine, it's got no DRO or any, I think it's got an auto feed down, but nothing, nothing else. Where, where they want an extra $20,000 for one with auto feed. Where you can buy the three auto feed lot things to put on your machine for about 400 bucks, if you buy the right, if you can get them. I've already got three lined up for it. And instead of oilers, self-oiling, it'll oil itself. Um, what else? And a DRA. I've already got two of the um, things up there. And my lathe's already got it. My lathe's already got a DRA on it, but it takes the, has to take the other other glass pack, not the glass ones, the other ones, the metal strip ones, they're a lot better. They, instead of sitting out underneath, they sit out the, underneath, real, right underneath. They sit up out the front so you can put your bracket up and down onto your middle and it just sits there and holds a whole lot, slides across. Now, I still haven't got the steel for me powder coating oven. I'm going to order that this week and get it all done. So I've got it here. I'll put it out the front here. Um, what else do I need? I'm thinking about buying a new welder. This old girl's still good. But I can't run six mil wire on it because of the rollers. I've got new rollers for it, but I've got to put a, a backing thing on to move them out so they fit properly. I couldn't buy the originals because they were a hundred dollars each. Yeah, I bought a fistful of for ten bucks a packer full. I think it was twenty in there. It goes from. 0.0106 to 2.5, 2.1, I think it is. It's really thick. And I can burn flux core wire. I can, all I've got to do is change with the roll of flux core in and burn it with the same gas. You get a better weld, you get a neater weld. And what else is there? Yeah, anyone got a good idea whether the best for powder coating is electric or a gas? I know gas is a lot cheaper. 
I just want an L-shaped burner so I can put the burner at the back and run the pipe out to the side where I can put a regulator. I'm not up on how to do this. I don't like gas much. <laughs> My son kind of, when he was little, turned on the gas heater and it never come on hot. Never went back to off. And it stayed on and the gas was seeping out. Yeah, and I come home and I bumped the switch and turned it off. And then I went went away and come back and hit the thing and away it went, but the, nearly blew the roof of the house off. She was a ball of flames right through the whole house. Scared the living crap out of me. I went outside, grabbed a hold of the meter, gas meter, undone it, turned all the gas off, undone it, pulled it out and threw it out in the middle of the street. That's where it stayed. Till he grew up. I think we moved into a house with electricity then. We were better off. Anyhow, I don't know. I this is really coming along well. I'm real I'm real happy with it so far. I said my bearings haven't turned up for me lathe yet. I have to order I think I might have broke more than a baron because the motor's got a horrible noise in it it's only a 500 watt motor five 500 watt which is only a little tiny thing um, i priced a brand new motor which i can go to a thousand 1100 watt which i might do runs at the same speed and a new bottom pulley and a new belt, just to make sure. But my bearings haven't turned up and they're not due until April. So, <coughs> to Barry, go Joe Daddy Garage. Wall looks good, mate. Iron Man gets a fair bit of a toast around the place. <laughs> I, you know, my, my writing's really lousy. My reading and writing's really lousy. I said, but I've seen him in there in a few places <laughs> on the new wall. Um, uh, what else is there? Um, yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, I see Doug out on the boat, travelling around the country, around the around the globe on another boat. I don't know what the hell. He's learning the sail. Yeah, he's got to have to learn first. He's got to get his captain's license if he's going to be the captain. I don't know where you need a captain's license. You just need a license to sail for a sailing boat. Uh, a 70-foot sailor, motor sailor. I think. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, anybody knows I got to harden my wheels yet because they've got to be a certain te um, te hardness before you start wearing them away, rolling things on soft metal, not good. It'll, the harder dies and the harder roller will make the rollers keep their shape and the dies. So I'm going to harden, get them hardened, I'm going to get a electric oven and take it up to oh, me forge. I'm going to see a bloke about getting some forge and get that done and then I'm going to heat me rollers up in the forge and then I'm going to drop them in the oil or whatever I've got to drop them in. To get them to get them to uh, temper. I hope. 
I think 4140 is air cooled. Well, that won't matter. That'll be good. I just heat them up to non magnetic and let them cool down. <coughs> I think I tried some. This is. This has got a nice, a yellowy tinge to it, but this is mild steel. See the yellowy tinge? It got a bit hot in the middle, but the yellow flows off. This has got really hard on the outside, but still soft on the inside. So that's not too bad. That's mild steel. There's a stuff you're supposed to put on the top of it, but they, I couldn't get any. So I just tried that bit. I've got a file on me. It's still still sandable. But she's hard. She's taking the colour, just to, just scratching the surface. So Yeah, I had to go out yesterday and buy some sand and disc, some of these. I said I used to get them off a of wish. For twenty-five dollars for twenty, they want one hundred and sixty-five dollars for twenty now. Yeah, some of them are worse. These are pretty good. They last. I've done all my grinding with them with one dip, one with a three-pack or a six-pack. You get three per pack here. They're six dollars something for three. Not a bad price. I, I trim them up with the grind in here first with this this one, just a normal Oz grinder. And then I hit them with this one and get down in there. I've got to do a little bit of body filler. I'm going to make it look pretty. Because it is a very important part of this workshop. And then when I'm finished it and got the wheels in it, I'm going to test run her on, on a square panel. I'm going to make a pattern in the square panel so it stays flat, perfectly square, perfectly level. You can do it. You can't roll it straight on a panel that's got no, hasn't been treated with an English wheel. Otherwise, you'd get twists and buckles and bows in it. So, this is going to be a 17 minute video, so. I wish you all the best. Give me a thumbs up. Um, hit that thumbs up button. That's really important. I said I was getting really good. Um, people give me a thumbs up on the comments and forget to do it on the other side <laughs> where it's important. I said, please hit that thumbs button. Leave me a comment. Um, I know it's been a little bit of a pain back and up and down, but I can't help that. I said, I'm I'm a lone wolf here. I said, I've got to do all this out of my own pocket. i got nobody financing, no backers, no nothing. i got no Patreon. I have got a eBay account and an email address if you want to send me some, some, some tooling or sandpaper or anything like that to do with automotive cars. Anything to do with car related motorcycles. Um, young Trent, he was kind of supposed to come in today. He's got a website. Um, can't remember what the name of it is. He just, his brother just smashed his bike to bits. Um, yeah, he's done a bit of damage. It's not, it's fixable. Probably five grand to get it fixed. That's include painting it. Or a bit better, all depends what he uses. Well, my Honda in there, I bought a whole racing fairing, which is half the weight, lighten the bike up heaps. Um, and it cost me $550 unpainted. And I painted it. I bought all the matching transfers. And then I put the, you don't stick them all on. You only use the edge and you tape it all up and you paint the colours one after the other 
because red's the base colour. Then you go red, white, and purple. I call it purple. And the bike is actually, and the white, you can spray, you tape up your red where your red finishes. And you, then you leave the rest white, you paint it white. Then you put your purple on, where all your purple's got to go. Tape it all up and spray your purple. Reverse painting, uh, that is the real killer when you've got to reverse paint from the back to the fucking front, from front to back. If you go back to back, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> some paints are real bastards. I've had some real, real mongrel colours. I had a, a X, XR Falcon GT, it was originally gold. I painted it metallic blue. This colour was mainly clear with a tinter in it, with the metallic and the clear. And then you put your tinter in it to darken it. Man, was that a bitch to paint. I mean, it was, if you didn't keep your tin, tin you spray, spray gun chilking, move it around, shake it. I put two marbles in it. Every time I paint a metallic paint now, or iridescent colours, or metallics, I put a couple of marbles in it. That way, unless it's a gravity feed, then you just give it a couple of wrinkles and keep on going. I kind of not like the gravity feed for overhead guns for doing that. Because I have noted sometimes the top pops off them. Where I have blown the top off them and have to start a paint job again. So, well, I'm going to go. So, if you want to give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up and uh, hit that like button, smash that like button, everybody. I said I get a lot of hits, but no views, not many views. 35, 40 views, probably zero comments, up to 11, 12 likes, no dislikes. But that's good. I said, they don't dislike it, it's just not their cup of tea. Well, I hope everybody has a good weekend. And I will see you on the flip side. And keep her on two wheels. Bye.